Okay, welcome back. If you're still with me in this series, then you're doing awesome. We've got a lot of great learning here still ahead of us. So let's just jump right in. Um, last video left off, we figured out how it was actually taking the name of the DLL. So we found out how it found the name, walking the PEP structure, and then pass that to a checksum value, uh, which we call DLL name checksum or pre-computed hash. I don't know, well, whatever way you'd like to call that. Uh, in this video, then, you're going to see how it uses that information plus walking the export table in order to start finally resolving these function pointers. Uh, this checksum value is moved into its return in the EAX register, and it's actually stored in the MM1 register. And so you'll notice here with our decompiler, our pseudocode, we get syntax like this, you know, MM, CVT, SI32, SI64. Uh, that's just indicating this move instruction right here. And we want to keep track of that because then down here, right, this is where it's actually used. So we could say that this is the DL, DLL name uh, computed hash value because it's not really pre-computed at this point. It was just computed. Um, I don't know why that comment went there, but that's fine. Uh, that's just that way. Well, here, let's fix it then because it's not as helpful if I don't remember. Right, so at least get that, like MM1 equals that. Right, that's moved into EAX, and then that's pushed as an argument for this call to sub 401180. Now, we don't necessarily know exactly what this is doing, but when we navigate into this function, you'll see it looks very, very similar to the previous, except it doesn't worry about the case of the name. It just takes the name as is. It doesn't try to lowercase everything. Um, walks through our, well, this has to be, our API name. So let's rename that to something more relevant. Uh, it's a byte pointer, so we could change the type because this is, I guess, while that is a true statement, we might get better decompilation if we say it's a char. Mm, not really. Uh, and then that is an int, yes, because this we know is our DLL seed. Right? And so it's doing a very similar process here of using a rotate, going through the characters to compute that that uh, that uh, that checks some value and that's what it's returning so we don't have to spend a lot of time here uh, we are going to rename this um, compute API uh, I'm gonna just continue with my names or my uh, naming convention of checksum right and now right, we'll go back and analyze all this but now you can see that it's comparing that return result to arc zero and if you go way back to these videos where we started, um, what is arg zero? Well, arg is the uh, you know the the computed checksum, or let's let's call this desired desired checksum, right? Here, let's look at the cross references. Uh, let's see here, because right, there's there is where there is an instance of where this is called. That value is moved into EAX. It's XORed with a constant uh, that's moved into that global, and then that's pushed onto the stack. So that's the argument. Okay, so now we're starting to make sense. Um, and that, here we go, now the comparison can be made. So now we see the sort of two tiered approach in order to um, compute the checksum for each export based off of its name with the argument to this function. Okay, but how did we get to the actual API name? And that's where we have to go back just a little bit here. And um, now we have to look at, well, what happens after the call to compute the checksum based off of the DLL name? All right, well, um, scroll back a little bit further. You'll see that we have in EDX the pointer to our export directory. That's an RVA, though. So if it exists, this can be added with EBX. And if you recall, EBX is our DLL base. So that gives us an absolute pointer to an image export directory. That means that at this point, we can use our structure offset and change that to represent the member that is being accessed right here, which is the number of names. We've talked a little bit about that already. Um, this also means that if we look at the decompiled results, we can probably, let's see here, v6 is um, the variable here that is 
we can change this to an image export directory pointer. And now that updates our decompilation here a little bit nicer, right? Because now it says this is number of names. So we could update this variable name as well. Uh, pointer um, image export directory. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Um, okay, number of names, right? So it's it's moving that or testing that to see if it is non-zero. And then if it is, it's moving this into var4. So we'll just say that this is num uh, export names. Okay, what happens next is uh, edx is our export directory. And so uh, the, the pseudocode already has this properly uh, typed for us, essentially. And that it's saying, hey, this is the address of names, and this is the address of name ordinals. So we could update those if we want, just to, again, keep our two code views in somewhat sync here. And why you're seeing these extra steps is, recall I, I mentioned that these are, this is going to be an RVA. So this is moved into ESI, and then ESI has to be added to EBX in order to get an absolute pointer in ESI. So the decompiler just said, yeah, uh, that's, that's what those instructions are doing, right? You can see it's highlighting both of those for us. All right, so V7 and V8 also, um, address the names, we could update these variables just to make them a little bit easier to read. And we also talked about the importance already of the address of names and the address of ordinals. That means that now we can move into this final basic block in which, oh, there's our DLL computed hash is moved into EAX. That's pushed onto the stack. Now we're loading a string D word. And a little tip here, if you ever forget you can turn on auto comments, even just momentarily. Uh, oh, that doesn't help at all, does it? <laughs> and what load string D word will do is it'll load whatever is in ESI into EAX, right? So I'll load SD, well, ESI, ESI is the pointer now to an array of RVAs for address of name. So that's moved into EAX, that's an RVA though, so EAX has to be added to the image base, EBX, and moved into EAX, in which case then it can be pushed on the stack. And so this push should be then a pointer to the first exported function um, from the DLL that it's currently navigating. And then that's pushed, or uh, and then our compute API checksum is called, which we already talked about. Uh, we can just confirm that, and this maybe is a good time to do such a thing. Uh, let's just get the last four bytes, or the last, um, two bytes here of our address, 5BB3, and I have this debugging somewhere. Let's go ahead and just use um, x32. I'm gonna set that breakpoint, and I'm just gonna let it run, and here we go, All right? So there's the call to that compute checksum value. You can see that what was in EAX was this value right here, which X32 has resolved as a string, pointer to a string, an ASCII string, and it is A underscore SHA final. So we are, uh, must be an NTDLL. Okay, so that's just confirmation. Uh, and it never hurts, uh, at least for me, I, I like to take a look at, once I've done a bunch of static analysis, maybe to just do a little dynamic analysis in a debugger, make sure that what I think is happening uh, is in fact happening because it's easy, even with the, the pseudocode, uh, to get a little bit lost here. Okay, so that does the comparison. And then what's, what happens next is, so what'll happen, there's uh, two options really. Um, one is that uh, because we're ready to, to walk the next name and one of the side effects here of, of the load SD instruction is that it also increments our ESI pointer, right? So it doesn't, ha you don't have to see a, an explicit, um, you know, plus plus on that pointer because the load SD did that for us. There is an add to EDI2. And again, if you recall from earlier in this video, I said that the address of name ordinals array is gonna be an array of word values or two byte values. So it's incrementing that just to keep, keep up. And then it jumps back around right here in order to, well, it checks if the number of exported names value is zero, decrements it, and then checks if it's zero. If it is, it's gonna get ready to exit. 
Um, if it isn't, it moves back around because then it can go and walk the next export. Um, if and when the computer checks some matches, well, then this code is what's going to finally resolve that function pointer. So uh, for the sake of sanity, I'm, I'm going to leave that for, for you as an exercise if you're interested. Uh, but eventually we'll get down to when this function returns, mm0. Right? And so this is this little chunk of code in particular is responsible for uh, resolving the actual function pointer, moving it into the mm0 register, moving that ultimately into EAX and then returning. So uh, we could set a breakpoint here at 5C17. And let's go with X32. Okay. Yeah, of course, we'll hit this one a lot because there's, you know, a Shaw in it. So I guess if we just continue to walk through these, you'd see a Shaw update, right? We're just going to continue to go through the exports. We don't want to do that. Um, but here is finally this move D. So MM0 and EAX, you can see what's in EAX. Um, EAX now was uh, is the pointer to RTL create heap. Okay, so where where does that take us? Well, um, let's go back. Let's just go back to the start, and we know that this is now at a broad level of resolving imports. And if we step into this function, this is where our analysis began. We just got done analyzing this direct API resolution. We just want to see what it returns. Right, and so the last couple videos were the long answer. That was the deep technical analysis as to what's happening inside of there. Um, an easier solution would have been just to set a break, you know, at the call or at this test, and see what's in EAX. So let's do that. Let's restart this debug. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all of my breakpoints except the address of entry. So that's the the default that hits when we select go here so when the executable is loaded once we hit the entry point um, we're going to step over the unpack we're going to step into this and here we go instead of setting a breakpoint it's just a few instructions you can see eax is rtl create heap right so that allows us now to look at this result so it's a pointer to rtl uh, create heap and that's ultimately what's called right here. You can see it's maybe a little bit easier to understand. So you can look that up. What that is essentially doing is it's creating a region of memory, a, a heap that can be used for this program. So this is a pointer, the result of this, um, which is this EAX in being moved into ESI, the return value, which is right here, is essentially a new heap. And this is going to play a role uh, in the next level of how this is resolving and ultimately then calling APIs. Um, we also have our direct API resolution here, right? And what we want to do then, let's just go back to the debugger and let's right here. This is where it's after that call. So let's zip ahead to that and EAX is RTL allocate heap. Okay, so this is now a pointer to RTL allocate heap. And it looks like it's using the same variable. So that makes it a little bit harder to you know, trace what originally happened. But in this case, it's fine because we captured the result with this variable. And this now remains a pointer to that for the rest of this function. So uh, let's see, it is returned right here. Uh, and so really, I guess all that really matters is the value from that call in EAX has moved into EDI, which is this, this right here in our decompiler. So we can rename that. We'll say that's a pointer to uh, RTL allocate heap. Yeah, it's going to, it's going to conflict a little bit. That's fine. Right. Again, the important thing is we see now for this next level function, that that's what it is. Okay, so 
now we're poised to take uh, our, the next step in this evolution and figure out what what does sub 405 DA0, what is that actually doing? And how is it using those array of, of pre-computed values or checksums, this array of what will become function pointers, how it populates those? Why is it using the new heap and why is it using a pointer to the function RTL allocate heap? So hope you join me in the next video. We'll continue this journey into our lockbit sample.